Before we get started, I would appreciate if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, what I want to talk about is how to research cryptocurrency projects. Because currently on the market, there's about 6,540 cryptocurrencies. And that's a lot of cryptocurrencies. A majority of those coins, tokens, projects are not going to go anywhere. That's the reality. Majority of them are nonsense, garbage, useless, not needed projects and pump and dumps, just quick money makers. Um, and really and truly, they're not going to be successful. In a few years from now, you won't see them. You'll probably see their market cap at zero, their daily volume at zero, and nobody is buying them. So majority of the coins and tokens in the cryptocurrency space are going to fail out of this 6,540, which I say is probably go, growing all the time. So you check back in a month from now, you'll probably see this list, this number has increased. So I want to talk about how we can or you can research a cryptocurrency project to see whether it's actually worth investing in or not. Out of all these alternative coins and tokens out there, how can you find the gems from these projects and see whether it's a project that's worth you putting money behind or not? Because let's just say out of the 6,540, 100 of them are actually solid projects, are actually good projects and actually worth investing in. Maybe you can invest in all 100, maybe you can't, but how can you find these 100 projects that's worth you putting money into because it has potential in the future? So let's talk about how to research cryptocurrencies. So if you haven't already, I would appreciate if you could like this video as it helps get the video out there so more people can see it and benefit from it. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my content so as to not miss my future videos and uploads. So let's talk about researching crypto. Now, this is what I usually do when I come across a new cryptocurrency project or someone recommends me a cryptocurrency project to make sure I'm doing my due diligence, my own research to determine whether this is a project or coin or token or whatever um, that I should invest into or not. And these are the things that I usually check. Um, feel free to let me know if you think I've missed anything out because I may have. So feel free to let me know in the comments. So this is how I research crypto. What I would usually do is I would always check if I come across a new project or recommended one to invest in, I would always check the website, the white paper, and read any blog posts, like medium articles about the project. This is um, the first thing I would do. I would go and check out the website and I would look through the website. Any crypto project that's, um, that comes my way, I'll see if I can find a white paper to read. And that just gives you more information about the project, about the token, the coin, its concept and so on. And any blog posts as well. I would read articles, whether it's done by the team of the project or other people that are support that support the project and they're explaining it. So just to get a good understanding of the project, the concept and what it's all about, to see whether I like it or not. Then... I would ask myself these questions. Does it solve a real world problem? And does it have a real world needed use case? Because there are too many cryptocurrency projects out there and they don't really solve any real world problem. They don't really solve any problem. So if they don't really solve a problem, then they're not really needed. They might not go anywhere because in my opinion, only cryptocurrencies projects that actually solve a real world problem and that will actually have a real world needed use case are the ones that are going to be successful long term and still be around still be around years from now if they are not solving any real world problem then what's their purpose and if it's not going to have a needed use case whereby people are going to whereby you can envision people actually using this project because it benefits them and it solves their problems in, in the real world, then what's its real purpose? 
So I would ask myself this and based upon the information that I've gathered from the websites, the white paper, the blog posts, I would be able to determine whether the cryptocurrency in question solves a real world problem and whether it actually is going to have a real world needed use case that will benefit people out there. Because to be successful, it has to be solving somebody's problem or a problem. And then I would ask myself as well, what's the chances of it being used and adopted in the real world? Because you may see um, projects and you think, oh, wow, that's, that's actually a better system or solution to the system we have now. And you think that sounds good. However, what is the chances of it actually being used and adopted in the real world? For instance, I've seen coins where they're targeting for instance, the medical industry or stuff like that. And they want to change the system as to how information is stored, um, data is accessed. And I, th- and I think to myself, the chances of that industry actually adopting your coin or your project, even though it may be potentially solving a problem, but the chances of them actually using your coin, your project is slim if not zero to none it's likely never going to happen i mean if that industry was to go into blockchain they would create their own blockchain very likely bring their own experts in and create their own blockchain to move their data over and use blockchain technology the chance of them using your project is unlikely unless of course you already have an agreement or partnership with government or whatnot whereby they are going to work with you to use your blockchain. That's different. But if you're just creating a blockchain and saying that, oh, this is a better way for medical records to be stored and accessed, patients' data, blah, 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 the chances of your project, even if it's solving a real world problem, actually being used and adopted by the market you're actually targeting in the real world is, if it's very unlikely, then... I won't invest in the I won't invest in the coin or project because I don't see it being successful. So so yeah, so it has to solve a real world problem and it has to have a real world needed use case. And then you have to ask yourself what are the chances of it actually happening the of this, even if it solves a problem, what are the chances of it actually being used and adopted in the real world? If you can see a good percentage likelihood that it's going to happen then that's good. If not, then don't waste your money, don't waste your time. Then another thing I always love to look at is the tokenomics. Now, I'm going to do another video on this, the tokenomics, because I've created another chart like this talking about tokenomics or tokenomics in the middle. So I'm not going to go into much detail on tokenomics now, but the tokenomics is stuff related to the token, the price, the supply, the demand, the purpose, utility, I put that all under tokenomics and I'll do a video on that. But I always look at the tokenomics. So if I like the project, if I think it has potential, then the next thing I'm going to check out is the tokenomics because at the end of the day, I'm in crypto to make money. I'm in crypto to basically hopefully make a lot of money because I see this space as the future. So this is where the tokenomics is important for me And it's one of my favorite aspects of crypto is looking at the tokens and going into that to see whether I want to invest in the project or coin or not. So I'll do another video on tokenomics. Another part of the video will be on tokenomics. So let's continue with this. So I'll research the tokenomics and see whether that ticks all the boxes for me, whether it's a coin or a project that has favorable tokenomics for me that I would like to invest in. The next thing which is really, really important, I will check out the team. Are they competent? The team behind the project, who are they, their background, their experience, their accomplishments, etc. So it's important that you check out the competency of the team because without a competent team, the project could look perfect on paper. The white paper could be amazing. The concept could be amazing. But without a competent team, it would never, ever, ever come to fruition so you could be investing in something based upon the white paper and this happened in 2017 during the ICO craze where every single project was just putting out a white paper 
and selling tokens and selling tokens as ICOs, initial, initial coin offerings, and many of them, majority of them, went nowhere, and there was no development, no building of what they put out there on the white paper, even though these projects generated millions because they were selling their tokens as ICOs, and the whole idea is for them to sell their tokens, build up a fund in order to actually build the project that they put out there. Um, the team wasn't competent, so it went nowhere, basically. So it's important to check out the team to see whether they can actually do the job that they're, that they're talking about. Can they do the job and build what they want to build as they're talking about in their on their website, their white paper, their blog posts, or or not? So check out the competency of the team and ask find out who they are what's their background what's their past experiences do they have any accomplishments and all that then after you've done research into the team if you like what you see if you see that yeah they're competent and they can get the job done they're already working on getting the job done then you can look at what they've accomplished what they've accomplished in regards to the project and its progress check out the partnerships being made have they made any partnerships have they made any partnerships with anyone or any organization or any company that's in that industry whereby the company is going to actually use their blockchain for aspects of their business? Have they made any partnerships? Yes or no? Is there progress in development? Check out the progress in development. Can you see progress occurring in development? Or is time going by and there's literally no progress happening? Are the roadmap targets hit? Now, when I check out the website, one of the things that I also look at is the roadmap. And the roadmap basically outlines their plans over the year or two. So check out the roadmap and look at the targets. What do they plan to do in quarter one of the year, quarter two of the year, quarter three of the year? And are these targets being met or not? Now, if you see that there's loads of partnerships happening with whatever the token coin or project that you're interested in investing in, there's lots of partnerships being made and there's lots of progress and development being made, and the roadmap targets are being hit, then that's a good thing. The next thing I would look at is the communication. Is there good communication from the team to the investors in the token? Is there good communication? Is there frequent news and updates in the announcement channels, on social media, on their blogs? Are they letting people know what's happening with their progress? How is development going? about these partnerships is there good support available because you're going to have questions you come across a new project you're going to have lots of questions and you're going to need a platform to raise them somewhere and you're going to need people from the team to actually provide you with this support to answer help answer your questions so is there good support available and what's the community like are they active are they an active excited community now these are all important things as well especially good communication because poor communication can kill a project. Because remember, you're investing your money in their token. So you're hoping that they will build something successful whereby you can actually make money from. And if there's poor communication and then you're not kept up to date with what's happening, the progress, how's development, you have questions. Imagine you have questions, you need support questions and they're not getting answered. Then I've been in projects like that before. And what I've, what I've ended up doing is I've sold those tokens straight away. I've got out of them because I've lost confidence in them if the communication is poor, if I don't see any good support available, there's no frequent news and updates. You look at you look and you just like six months has gone by and you don't know what's happening. I mean it begins to look like a scam when communication dies out. There's no news and updates. The support is unavailable. It begins to look like a scam. And if you can see that happening gradually where the project is deteriorating, it's time to probably time to get out because it's not looking good. Check out the community as well. Is the community active and excited about the project? Or do you notice that a lot, a lot of the community members are no longer talking or available anymore? Or the excitement is not there anymore? There's lots of FUD, FUD, where there's fear, uncertainty and doubt. And no one from the team can actually um, answer questions to minimise this fear, uncertainty and doubt that the community members are having. And if you notice that, lots of negativity in the team as well, not sorry, in the community as well, because they don't know what's happening, they don't know what's going on. It's also a very bad sign and probably time to get out of the project as well. Because remember, a lot of these crypto projects in a startup phase where they're building and growing, it's all about the community. It's the community that's the foundation of these projects. It's the community that actually buys the tokens, 
gives a token, it's a value, supports the project, and they're excited about it. So if the community starts dying out, then basically the project itself is beginning to die out. And that's a bad thing. So the community won't die out if there's good communication. The community won't die out if there's frequent news and updates. That gets the community excited and wanting to invest more because they see value in the project. The community won't die out if there's good support as well because when they need help, if they have a good relationship between the team members of the project and there's good support, the community won't die out. If anything, the community would grow and thrive. But when you start seeing the community die out, it's because there is an underlying issue that is eroding the community gradually and it's not being fixed. So it may then go back to the competency of the team. They don't really care about their community and part of being competent is caring about the community. And if they're not doing that, then the project is going to eventually get, it's going to fail. So this is another important thing that I check out. And you can check out the good, good communication by checking out their social media channels, the Telegram channels, the blog posts, the support um, channels. Check that all out and see how the community is, how the updates are, if there's good support available. Do they have a good relationship with the community? Are the community excited? So that's another very important point. And that's what, and that's what I check out as well. And when I'm interested in a project, I mean, I'll go into a group and I'll ask questions and see the res- and see the response that I get from the admins and the other community members, and just get a feel, you know, of what the support is like and so on. And then the, ne- the next thing I would ask myself is, does it have long-term potential? Where do you see the project in five to ten years? And when I invest in crypto, there are day traders and there's long-term investors. I myself, I consider myself as a long-term investor. I don't care about the short-term price fluctuation from the day to, from day to day. I care more about the price over a long period of time. So if I invest now, where would the coin be in three years' time? Where do I see the coin or project or token being in five years' time? Where do I see it in 10 years' time? In 10 years' time, do I still see this project as being something that's going to be around, solving problems, providing value, being adopted in the real world? Or in 10 years' time, is this project not going to be needed or necessary or useless? I mean, you don't, I don't want to invest into something where, ten, where five to 10 years from now, it's not even a thing or it's not even necessary. So ask yourself, do you think this project or this token has long-term potential? Where do you see the project in five to 10 years' time? Is it something that's still going to be alive or do you think it's something that's not going to be there anymore? And yeah, so if you can't answer this question and you can't see, you can't envision where you see the project in five to 10 years time, then it's not really a long-term project because a long-term project should last five years. It should last 10 years. It should last 10 years plus. It should go into the second decade. Look at Bitcoin, for instance, 10 years has gone by from its inception, 2009, 2019. And where is it today? Can someone really say to themselves that they don't see Bitcoin available in another 10 years? It's like very likely going to be available in the next 10 years. From In the first 10 years, it hasn't died out. It's just gone from strength to strength. And in the next 10 years, I don't see that. I don't see dying out either. I just see it going from strength to strength as well. So that's long-term potential. Bitcoin has long-term potential as a cryptocurrency. So where do you see the project in five to 10 years? Does it have long-term potential? If you can't see it, of anywhere in five to ten years then then some of these points that i've raised already you couldn't have answered yes such as solving a real world problem a competent team the chance of being used and adopted in the real world you'd have you'd have had to answer no and if you're going to answer no to these questions and maybe it's just a short-term project are you winning the project just to make a quick buck and get out then it's not really a long-term project and it's not really for me because i am not interested in short-term projects i'm interested in long-term projects that have long-term potential the next important point is, is the project well funded and able to sustain itself throughout development? And what are the funding sources of the project? This this point is very important because you can have an amazing project. However, they dry out of funding. So it's not well funded. And if it's not well funded, then development will cease, development will stop and the project just dies. So you need to find out how well funded is the project. And is it able to sustain itself throughout development? Now, you can find this out by if it was an ICO, for instance, an IEO. These are just basically ways for projects to actually um, generate funding by selling their tokens to um, interested investors. And 
that's how they build a funding pot initially now if it's if it was one of those sort of projects you, the information out there will be will be available for you to see how much they actually made um from selling their tokens now you can see some projects oh they made 10 million 3 million 5 million so they made big large amounts of money and from there you should be able to see whether you you think whether the, whether you think the project is well funded or not and whether it's going to be able to sustain itself throughout development then you can ask questions as well about the funding if especially if there's a good um active support available about the funding and whether they're going to have enough funding to support development and what are the other funding sources um once development is completed because a lot of these projects they have a funding for development and once the project is developed the idea is obviously a token they built something that has a real world that solves a real world problem and has a real world use case so from that the token is going to gain more value because it's going to be used it's going to be adopted yeah so just take check out the funding sources and see where the funding is coming from if you see that the token when i talk about tokenomics that could be a good funding source for the project in the future as the token gains value so would their so would their project it will be well funded lastly you want to check out any competitors are there any competitors and if so you're likely to find competitors because there's a competitor for, there's competitors for everything out there if something is good you're going to find other competitors that are building the same thing or a similar thing in order to solve the same problem um, that your project that you're invested in is trying to solve so check out if the project has any competitors and what are the advantages and unique selling points it has over them what are the unique selling points that differentiates your project from the competition out there that could only be done by researching the other projects out there as well that are its competitors and see if you can find the advantages or sometimes you could ask the community and ask them what's the difference between this project and that project because they're both doing the same thing and maybe they they would be able to tell you the advantages as well and the unique selling points that your project has over that project and a lot of them will be more than happy to tell you this because they're excited about the project and they see it as better than the competitor hence why they're invested in it so find out if there's any competitors out there because there'll be there would likely be competitors there are competitors out there for bitcoin there are competitors out there for the ethereum cryptocurrency there's competitors out there for every project and cryptocurrency out there and it's not a bad thing and that is not to say that if there are competitors out there that it's either you or them that are going to be successful it's not the case at all it's possible that both of your tokens and projects can be successful because the market that you're tackling has a lot of room for both of you to be in that market and generate wealth so it's possible that both of you and the competitor can be, do very well the tokens of both of your projects can do very well however it's also likely that there's going to be a king in the space as well yeah this is part one of the video researching cryptocurrency and in part two of this video i'm going to talk about how to look into the tokenomics of the project and see whether it's worth investing in or not so thank you for watching and let's go to part two of this video don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so as to not miss my next video take care and goodbye